are certain circumstances under which an LLC would be a nightmare to do. And what I mean by nightmare is that your lawyer is going to have to charge $50,000 and, and draft, you know, 50 pages of paperwork for you to structure under an LLC based on the way that you instructed your lawyer to do so. Welcome to another exciting episode of Tip Top Startups. I am your host, David Nima. I am one of the top trademark and technology attorneys in the United States. And on today's episode, we are going to discuss company formation and structuring for startups. In this video, we're going to discuss why you need to form a company, best practices for forming an LLC versus a corporation, and I'm going to sprinkle this video with a whole bunch of tips and best practices from my experience as an attorney and startup consultant in the technology industry. So let's get right into it. Now, obviously, if you want to start a business, you don't necessarily have to form a company in the United States to start a business. You can operate under what's called a sole proprietorship, and there'll be no issues with it. You discuss everything and you do all your accounting as you would do any normal business, but you are not a separate company, and that is technically legal in the United States. However, most startup companies, most technology startup companies do form some type of formal entity, some type of formal company in the United States so they can operate under that company umbrella and separate their own personal assets from the company's assets and op operations. So the question is, why is this a best practice and how to do it for technology startups? So the reason, the primary reason that a separate company should be formed, a separate entity should be formed to do business under is what's called limited liability. Limited liability in the LLC, limited liability company structure, or in the corporation, corporation structure, means that in the event that the company has no assets and has, it has an inability to pay off its debts, right? Let's say, for example, the company is valued at $100,000, but then it gets hit with a lawsuit for $200,000, and now it has to pay $200,000, but since the valuation is $100,000, if even if it liquidates all its assets, it'll still be short $100,000. In that case, the person who is entitled to that $200,000 or outstanding $100,000 would want to reach in and sue the personal shareholders of the company. So this would be the CEO, the CFO, the co-founders of the company. Any and all shareholders in the company could potentially be liable for that company debt because the company can't no longer pay it, right? So what, what investors do, what people with assets do, is that they create a separate company, and this allows them to have limited liability, meaning that the debt holder cannot go past the company assets and reach into the private holdings of the shareholder to collect its money. Okay? For example, Coca-Cola is a large corporation, right? publicly traded in the, on the stock exchange. And Warren Buffett is one of the wealthiest individuals in the, in the world and is also a shareholder of the Coca-Cola company. If for some reason Coca-Cola goes bankrupt and has an outstanding debt of, let's say, $1 million, the person that is entitled to that outstanding debt cannot sue Warren Buffett personally to collect that debt, even though Warren Buffett is a shareholder of the company. So that's, this kind of li limited liability structure is one of the primary reasons why at least investors will require some type of company formation so that they can protect their own personal liability in case this new technology startup doesn't have the money to pay its bills and eventually goes bankrupt. Now, there's a lot of reasons why a company might have, be facing debt. You, usually, it's from kind of a breach of contract. You get sued for intellectual property infringement. You could get sued for somebody slipping on a banana peel you know, at your location. There's a lot of reasons why you might not be able to meet your debts. 
and an investor in the tech startup will absolutely require this type of company structuring so that it's, if, if that investor becomes a shareholder to the company, the investor's personal assets, let's say the investor has a house in Malibu, for example, it's not going to be up for grabs in the event of bankruptcy by the startup. So limited liability, number one reason why companies are essentially, essentially organized. The other reason that the company is organized is so that they can have some kind of formal framework for doing things within the company. Things such as adding a new shareholder, removing a shareholder, doing a buyout, appointing a new S, uh, CEO. You know, various types of major decisions made by large companies and even smaller companies, as long as it's more than one founder, it could get more complex. So there's a lot of rules and what's called bylaws or sometimes called an operating agreement that essentially govern the operational activity of the company and how it's supposed to do certain things from a formality perspective. perspective. Again, an investor is going to re require that. An investor wants to know that this company has formal rules in place so that in, in the event that the company wants to, let's just say, I don't know, sell all its shares to an acquiring party, the investor, based on the rules, has a say in that. Maybe there's voting that happens, for example. So this kind of memorialization, the formalization of the company rules and procedures is another reason that companies or startups organize as a formal company. Now let's talk about the two major, most common types of company structures that startups form into for doing their operations, either at the R&D phase, the early pre-launch research, market research phase, or when they launch and essentially are operable and start to scale and have larger and larger volume of business. So there are two types of entity structures that are the most common for technology startups. They are LLCs or limited liability companies, and then the other one is corporations. Now, these are the two most common types of company structures that startups use to organize under and start doing business under. And the question is, as a startup yourself, which entity structure is best for you? Now, it's going to be difficult for me or impossible for me to give you personal advice through this video because your own specific circumstances and the startup specific circumstances generally govern which entity structure is best for you, right? There are certain circumstances under which an LLC would be a nightmare to do. And what I mean by nightmare is that your lawyer is going to have to charge $50,000 and, and draft, you know, 50 pages of paperwork for you to structure under an LLC based on the way that you've instructed your lawyer to do so. But on the other hand, the corporate structure might be a much more simpler structure, a much simpler vehicle for you to organize under based on those specific instructions. So which entity is correct for, is best for you really depends on the specific circumstances of the startup. Some of the main factors that determine whether an LLC or a corporation is best are as follows. For example, if the company anticipates doing a lot of equity-based deals where it is going to be exchanging shares for either cash from an investor or services from employees, right? And you're going to be exchanging shares of the company and granting shares of the company to would-be stockholders of the company. And you see a lot of stockholders or shareholders coming in and out of the company. In that case, a corporation might be best for you. Okay, because a corporate structure allows for the allocation of shares in a much more simpler format rather than an LLC structure. On the other hand, if a company is just starting out and it's two found co-founders, for example, that are self-funding the business and they don't anticipate doing any kind of employee stock agreements, they don't anticipate you know, doing any kind of major fundraising with investors, at least for the next, let's say, one to two years, then it might be best for them to do a simple LLC and have that serve as what's called a holding company or a holding entity that holds the intellectual property rights and all of the proprietary rights that the company is going to develop by writing code, creating marketing assets, 
and start promotion of this new technology product. Now that company might also form another LLC or a separate corporation, which would be its operating company versus this original LLC, which will be the holding company. Nevertheless, the need for a complex corporate structure will not be there because the company is not anticipating doing equity-based deals in the next two years. So that might be another driving factor for why an, a simple LLC structure is best versus a corporate structure. And finally, in terms of which state to organize under, this really depends on where the company is going to be headquarters and the laws of the respective states with respect to corporate law and LLC law. Delaware generally is the most favored and most common state to organize a business under. And the reason for that is because they have a very mature set of local state laws in corporate law. And investors like that because there is more certainty in a Delaware court in case there is a complex corporate lawsuit, for example. Right. On the other hand, if you have a corporation that's formed, let's say, in Wyoming, for example, the corporate law may not be as robust as the corporate law in Delaware. And that's why somewhat, somewhat, some investors may not want a Wyoming-based corporation. Same thing for LLCs. And I think this is where you want to discuss with your financial advisor and your legal advisor personally in terms of which jurisdiction, which state is best for you to organize under. And of course, refer to the notes that we discussed earlier and the, some of the other topics that I discussed in Tip Top Startups, Chapter 1, which is Entity Formation and Structuring for Technology Startups, to kind of get more insight on best practices of whether an LLC or a corporate structure is best for your startup. This has been Tip Top Startups, the podcast where we inform and educate entrepreneurs on legal and business fair strategy. I am David Nima, founder of Tip Top Startup School and author of Tip Top Startups and Tip Top Trademarks, now available on Amazon. I will see you guys in the next video.